This is a video lesson for solving projectiles launched at angles problems. The learning target for this lesson is, I am learning to calculate the starting and ending velocities, horizontal distance, maximum height, ending height, and hang time of a projectile launched at an angle. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can, learn, I can calculate the starting and ending velocities of a projectile launched at an angle, I can calculate the horizontal distance traveled by a, horizontal pro by a projectile launched at an angle, I can calculate the maximum height of a projectile launched at an angle. I can calculate the ending height of a projectile launched at an angle. And I can calculate the hang time of a projectile launched at an angle. All right, so let's talk about solving projectiles launched at angles problems. So what's the process? So the first thing you want to do is draw a diagram of the motion. This helps to visualize the problem. So what's the launch height? What's the initial velocity? What type of problem is it in general? So does the projectile land below the launch height? Does it land above the launch height? Does it land at the same height as the launch? So you're going to write down all the given information on the diagram, and then you're going to look everything over and see what you need to try and solve for. OK, so further solving a projectile angle launched at, uh, a projectile launched at an angle problem. So let's keep looking at how you're going to solve this problem. So what things need to be found? So first, you're going to find the vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity. Second, you want to determine the time of flight. How long is a projectile in the air for? So you can do this in two steps. First, you find the time to the apex, and then you find the second to the ground. If the projectile is, uh, trajectory is symmetrical, you can just find one of those and multiply that time by two. If the if the projectile's uh, trajectory is not symmetrical, you have to find one and then the other. And there are different ways to do this, so we'll look at a couple of different ways. Third, you're going to find the horizontal range. This is the total distance that the projectile travels horizontally. And then you want to find the resultant velocity and the angle. So this is where you're going to use Pythagorean theorem uh, to figure out the, the hypotenuse of the triangle that is made by the the uh, two sides of the triangle being the horizontal velocity and the, and the vertical velocity. And then you're going to use the, the tangent, the inverse tangent, to find the angle. Okay, so let's look at this first problem. Finding, find the vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity. Okay, so MC Hammer's on stage 1.8 meters above the dance floor. He takes a flying leap into the crowd. He takes off at an angle of 30 degrees with a velocity of 4.8 meters per second. The crowd catches him on their shoulders 1.8 meters above the dance floor. What are the vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity? Okay, so we've got our dance floor here. MC Hammer, with whom I'm not going to try and draw. So we have 1.8 meters. He takes off, flies into the crowd. So this is also 1.8 meters. Okay, so he's got this initial velocity, which is uh, 4.8 meters per second. So I'm going to blow this part up here. I'm going to blow this part up. So we have our initial velocity at angle is 30 degrees, and this initial velocity is 4.8 meters per second. Okay, and we want to break this into its components. So we have our Vx and our Vy. So this is just V. Call that V initial. So this would be Vx naught and this would be Vy naught. Okay, so let's so break it up into our components. Uh, so here's Vy. Okay, so to break up into a, to break a, a vector into its components, we're going to use uh, sine and cosine functions. So let me draw this again here. So we have this is our initial velocity, v naught is equal to four point eight meters per second. So here is our x component. Here's our angle of thirty degrees. So if we look at this as a triangle. So here we have, uh, if this is the angle 30, this is the angle 30 degrees, Vx is the adjacent side of this triangle. 
So the adjacent side is uh, the cosine side. So we have Vx is equal to V naught times cosine of the angle. So that's cosine 30 degrees. So Vx is going to equal four, 4.2 meters per second. Okay, so it's a pretty shallow angle, so most of the velocity is in the horizontal direction. And then we have our vertical direction. So this angle, or so this, uh, or this vector uh, would be, in terms of the triangle here, in terms of this side, it would be the opposite side. So this would be V sub Y is equal to V naught sine theta, because it's the opposite side, or sine 30 degrees, okay? So Vy then is equal to 2.4 meters per second. Okay, so we've got our vertical and horizontal components of the initial velocity. We have Vx is equal to 4.2 meters per second, and Vy is 2.4 meters per second. So Vy is equal to 2.4 meters per second. Okay, so we're looking at the MC Hammer example again. So we've got the vertical and horizontal velocities here. So um, we want to know how long until he reaches his maximum height above the dance floor. Okay, so we're looking for time. So we want to know how long. So how long is MC Hammer in the air? So I'm going to draw our diagram again real quick. So we've got this height is 1.8 meters. Okay, so this is our trajectory. This is our, so our velocity vectors here. Okay, so he's going to spend a certain amount of time in the air. So his Vy at max height, Vy max, is equal to 0 meters per second. So if we think about um, our kinematics equations, we could use Vy is equal to Vy naught plus Ayt. Okay, so we know our Vy at max height, that is equal to zero. Vy naught, that is his initial velocity here, so we could call this Vy0 and Vx0. Uh, and then our acceleration is going to be minus 10 meters per second squared. So we could solve for the time here that it takes to get to this maximum height. So we could say that this is zero. Vy0 is 2.4 meters per second. And then we have minus 10 meters per second squared times our time, which we don't know. So multiply or add time to both sides. So we have 10 meters per second squared times time is equal to 2.4 meters per second. So divide by time or divide by the acceleration, 10 meters per second squared. We end up with time is equal to 0 0.24 seconds. All right, so it takes him 2 point, uh, 0 0.24 seconds to reach his maximum height. Okay, so now we want to know how long MC Hammer is in the air for overall. So how long is MC Hammer in the air? So this uh, projectile motion is symmetrical around the middle because he's launched from 1.8 meters and he lands at a height of 1.8 meters. So uh, we can say that the total time, so T total is equal to two times the time to max height, which is what this is. So this is time to max height. So our total time then is gonna be two times 0 0.24 seconds. So our Total time then 
is equal to 0 0.48 seconds. So time to max height is 0 0.24 seconds and total time, the time that MC Hammer is in the air is 0 0.48 seconds. Okay, another way to solve for time is to use the equation y equals y naught plus v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so we know our initial and final heights. So our initial height is zero. Our uh, final height is zero. So our initial velocity is 2.4 meters per second. We're looking for time plus one half our acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared times t squared. Okay, so simplifying, doing some algebra, uh, I'm going to move this term over to the left side after I simplify. So we have 5 meters per second squared times t squared is equal to 2.4 meters per second divided by t. So I'm going to move the the single t term from I'm going to divide by t on both sides and I'm going to divide by 5 meters per second squared on both sides so I end up with t is equal to 0 0.48 seconds which is exactly what we got before so here's another method to determine the flight time okay so we're trying to find the horizontal range so how far does hammer uh, MC Hammer travel in the x direction with a horizontal range. Okay, so we've got our initial, we've got our velocities in the x and y direction, and we've got our total time. So we're going to use the equation x equals x naught plus vx t to get our, our x here. So x naught is zero. So x is equal to our x velocity. So 4.2 meters per second times 0 0.48 seconds. And that's going to give us our horizontal range of 2.0 meters. Okay, so here we're trying to find MC Hammer's final velocity and the angle of his velocity. Okay, so first thing we can recognize is that this is a symmetrical trajectory, as we said before, because he takes off and lands at the same place. So his uh, initial velocity and his final velocity are going to be the same. So this is true of the components, and it's true of his uh, total velocity. So his, he took off with a velocity of 4.8 meters per second with an angle of 30 degrees. So he's going to land at a velocity of 4.8 meters per second at an, at an angle of minus 30 degrees. So his final velocity, so V we could say, is equal to 4.8 meters per second at minus 30 degrees. Now, of course, we can, so this looks like a six, so let's try to make that look more like an ampersand. Uh, okay, so, or an at symbol. So uh, let's uh, just do the math here to confirm that this is actually true. So remember that the resultant velocity, that the resultant of an, a um, vector is equal to the square root of the components of the vector squared. So we have 4.2 meters per second at squared plus 2.4 meters per second, and that's squared. So we take the square root of the squares of the two components, add it together. So we have V is equal to square root of 17.64 plus 5.76. We sum those together and take the square root. We end up with a square root of velocity of 4.8 meters per second. Okay, and then to confirm the angle here, we're going to do, and this should be a negative velocity. So you're not going to get that with the square root, of course, um, but actually we can ignore the, the negative because, uh, because we're going to get that with the angle. Okay, so remember to get that angle, 
we're going to do the inverse tangent of the y, so 2.4 over the x component, and that's going to equal our theta. So that's equal to so it's equal to 29.7 degrees. And if you make the 4.2 or the 2.4 negative, uh, then that gives you a negative. So that's uh, if you round up, that gives you 30 degrees. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Okay, so another way to find the final velocity, uh, we're going to figure out the resultant velocity, is to figure out uh, a, a way, a, a different way to find the final uh, vertical velocity. So if we use the equation dy equals dy naught plus acceleration times time, we can figure out the final velocity a different way. So if we figure out the, the final velocity from the maximum height, so um, we know the, at the maximum height our uh, initial velocity would be zero. So, um, and we know that the time from maximum height to the ground is 0 0.24 seconds. So we have Vy is equal to zero minus our acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared times 0 0.24 seconds. So that gives us a uh, velocity of minus 2.4 meters per second. So that's our final velocity uh, when it hits the ground in the y direction. So then to do our resultant, we just do exactly what we did in the last problem. So V then is equal to the square root of minus 2.4 meters per second squared plus 4.2 meters per second square that. And that's just the same process that we did in the last slide. So I'm not going to go through the entire process again, but it's the exact same process. Okay, so here we have a different problem. So we're determining the flight time, different starting and ending heights. Uh, we want to use some multiple methods. So uh, Top Golf has elevated driving bays. So one of the guests pulls out a 52 degree wedge and hits the golf ball with an initial velocity of 45 meters per second. The golfer is at an elevation of 10 meters. So how long is the golf ball in the air? Okay, so we're, we're, we're looking for the final time. So we're looking for t total. All right, so let's draw a diagram. Okay, so we start off at 10 meters above the ground. Right, the ball is launched and it lands down here on the ground. So we have a starting velocity of 45 meters per second. We've got an initial an initial angle of 52 degrees. So this is obviously not drawn at 52 degrees. So we're going to try and find how long the ball is in the air. So how long does it take to follow this entire trajectory from the moment it hit, it's hit to the moment it hits the ground? Okay, so the first step we want to do is figure out our, uh, our x and y uh, components of the velocity vector. So we have our 45 meters per second, so our v naught is equal to 45 meters per second. Okay, so here is our vx, and here is our vy. This is our angle, 52 degrees. Okay, so vy is going to be 45 meters per second times sine of 52 degrees. And that's going to give us a velocity of 35.5 meters per second. And then the y is going to be 45 meters per second times cosine of 52 degrees. It gives us a velocity of 
27.7 meters per second. Okay, so we have our Vy and our Vx. Okay, so we can do this in a couple of different ways. Um, let's do it first by finding the time to the maximum height here. So time to maximum height. And then we'll find the time from the maximum height to the ground. Okay, so we can use Vy equals Vy naught plus AT, where Vy will be the time to the max height. Okay, so our velocity at max height is zero. You see zero is equal to our Vy at the initial starting point is 35.5 meters per second. Our acceleration here is minus 10 meters per second squared times our time. So this is our time at max height, which is what we don't know. So move this to the left side. So we have 10 meters per second squared times our time at max height is equal to 35.5 meters per second. So divide both sides by 10, and we end up with time to max height is equal to 3.55 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to write this number down, and then I'm going to move some stuff around and um, give us some space to keep figuring. Okay, so now we're going to figure out how long it is from the max height back down to the ground here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is figure out how high the maximum height is. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use Vy squared equals Vy naught squared plus 2Ay minus Y naught. We're going to use this because we don't have time. So we don't know how how long it takes to get up. Well, we do know how long it takes, but um, this this way we can uh, we can figure out the max height. Okay, so our uh, max velo the velocity at max height is zero. So we have zero equals our initial velocity is three five point five meters per second, and that's squared plus 2 times minus 10 meters per second squared times y max, that's our final velocity, or that's the height at the maximum point, and then y naught is our 10 meters, that's where we start. Okay, so doing some uh, simplification and some algebra. Okay, so we have 0 is equal to 1260.25 meters squared per second squared minus 20 meters per second squared times y max plus 200 meters squared per second squared. Okay, so I'm going to move the minus 20 times max height over to the left side. So we have 20 meters per second squared times y max is equal to 1,460.25 meters squared per second squared. So divide this by 20, and we end up with y max is equal to 73.0 meters. Okay, so that's our max height. Okay, so now we're going to figure out the time from our maximum height down to the ground. So now we can use our, we can use y equals y naught plus v y naught 
two plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so we'll say that our y naught is the 73 and y is zero. So we have zero equals 73 meters plus our y naught is uh, from the max height is zero plus one half times our acceleration of minus 10 meters per second squared times t squared so we have minus 73 meters is equal to minus 5 meters per second squared times t squared so then skipping a few steps I'm going to uh, divide both sides by 5 and then take the square root of that so I have t is equal to 3.82 seconds so our total time then is equal to 3.55 seconds plus 3.8 two seconds, which gives us a total time of 7.37 seconds. So from the moment the ball is hit up here at the beginning of the driving range to the time it hits the ground here, it takes 7.37 seconds. Okay, so let's do a different way to figure out the, the flight time. Okay. So, uh, this time let's use y equals y naught plus v y naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so our initial height would be forty uh, would be ten meters, and our final height would be zero. So we have zero is equal to ten meters. Our initial y uh, y naught is 35.5 meters per second times t plus one half our acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared times t squared okay here we have a uh, quadratic so I'm going to simplify everything uh, and I'm going to move uh, the t squared to the left side so we get rid of that negative so we have 5 meters per second squared times t squared minus 35.5 meters per second times t minus 10 meters is equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to use the quadratic formula to, to solve this for t. So t is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So t squared, or t rather, t is equal to, so minus b is 35.5 plus or minus the square root of 35.5 squared minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is minus 10 all that over 2 times 5 and we have As usual, two solutions. So t is equal to minus 0 0.27 seconds and 7.37 seconds, which is the answer we got last time. So the total time for the projectile to go from the initial launch at 45 meters per second to zero meters down here is 7.37 seconds. So you can see while doing the quadratic formula may be a little bit annoying and it's uh, kind of time consuming to do the calculations in your, in your calculator, 
Uh, if you set it up correctly, it's much faster than doing uh, the two the, the the other method. Okay, so here we're trying to get the horizontal range. How far in the horizontal direction does the ball travel? So we've got our total time. We've got our initial x velocity. So we're going to use the constant motion equation x equals x naught plus vx t. So our x naught is zero. X equals vx is twenty seven. 0.7 meters per second times our time of 7.37 seconds. So multiply those two together and we end up with a horizontal range of 204.2 meters. So the golf ball travels in a horizontal direction, this direction right here, 204.2 meters. Okay, so what have we learned in this lesson? So first thing to do is draw a diagram of the problem. So label it with all the given information you have and what you're looking for. It's going to help a lot to, when you're solving problems. So secondly, find the relevant information. So find the initial velocities first, then the time, then the range, and then the final velocity. Alright, that's how you're going to solve projectile motion problems.